there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with this year's Stamp Show Haul. Now, I don't typically post haul videos. I haven't, I used to do it fairly frequently, but then I realized I was just buying stuff so I could show it off in a haul video, and that was like, ew, I don't want to do that. Uh, so that's why you haven't seen many haul videos over the past couple of years on my channel. I know some of you guys uh, enjoy them, um, but that's what this video is, so I just wanted to put that out there in case you don't like haul videos. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is showing you what I picked up at the Stamp Show, the Heirloom Stamp show in West Springfield, Massachusetts last weekend. Uh, uh, for three of my friends and I drive down together and then we meet up with other friends at the hotel and at the stamp show and it's a lot of fun. It was an, I took a couple days off. I didn't teach. Um, I just needed kind of like a creative recharge and that's what it was. It was wonderful and I had such a great time. Um, the uh, Something that I'm going to show you while I'm showing you all the, the, the new things is um, I'm also going to tell you what I'm going to do with these and this year I'm going to do something different on my end here, how I usually store my things. What I typically would do is I would take my new things and put them in a basket or a box on my table and then I would work from that basket as much as possible to try to get through and use everything that I got um, once within the first like, couple of months but I was looking at last year's stamp show haul and I realized that there was a few things that I never got around to using and I and I I kind of felt bad about that and I was like how can I prevent that from happening because when I'm buying something I'm saying how I want to use it how I'm planning to use it then it hit me that I need to make little kits so what I'm going to be doing is if I bought a project for a specific reason most of the things that I got I am getting to use with things I already have I am going to put it in a tray with stuff I already have so that I can make a little kit that I can then take to my table and work out of that's going to give more life to my old stuff and it's going to get that new stuff used and in the rotation and it's going to make me remember that I have it um, so that you know it gets used and it goes on to inspire you guys which is another reason that I like to go to these shows and see the new things and um, learn new stuff so I can therefore show you new stuff. So the first things I want to show you here before we go down to the table and I, um, I'll turn the camera around so you can see my table and it will be easier to see the products I want to show you my most special treasures that I got at the show and those would be swaps. Um, the first one is a gorgeous traveler's notebook style journal from Teresa. I'm only going to use first names here just to protect people's privacy if they don't want their last names out um, but she made this gorgeous book um, it's not really a junk journal, but she did put some wonderful like like pockets and bags and she used up some pattern, pa pattern paper and um, you can tell I'm tired because the main accent comes out when I'm tired. Uh, and she had some peg stamping in there that I love and it was just thanks for being my friend on the front and do more things. Do more of what brings you joy. And she goes, and she handed that to me. She goes, because that's what you need to do. Do more things that bring you joy. Because she, um, she knows that I recently had canceled my live streams because it was becoming kind of stressful and I didn't feel like they were, um, I didn't feel like people really were liking them anymore. So I just decided that I, I and then that made me more stressed about it. So yeah, it was just like, whoo, stress snowball. Uh, so she gave me that. I thought that was very, very sweet. So thank you, Teresa. Then uh, when I got to the show, um, I had invited anybody who wanted to swap artist trading cards or artist trading coins with me. I did a couple tutorials and I said, if you make these and you want to swap them, um, bring them to the show and find me and I will swap. And I got some real cool, original, unique artist trading cards and coins and I want to share those with you. So the first one I'm going to share with you is from Margaret. And it's a gorgeous watercolor artist trading card. Um, it looks like it's done in a couple pieces of thick watercolor paper. Um, on the back it says "Color Your World." I just don't want to. I don't want to give away. I just want to be respectful of people's privacy. That's why just the first names. But it's got a gorgeous some glitter accents and some glossy accents on there, and it's just really pretty little petunias. Just gorgeous. Thank you so much, Margaret. I love that. And then this one here is from Lisa. It's a artist trading card that's based on a jelly print. It's got die cut and some glitter. And it's just gorgeous. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. I just want to make sure that... i got to cover my face with it or the camera wants to focus on my face. Hopefully that shows up. And then another one is a standard artist trading card. And that was also made by Lisa. And it's got some gorgeous embossed coffee beans. And I'm thinking... Maybe she didn't intend to let me trade both of these, I'm not sure, so um, if I took one too many, Lisa, I apologize, but I just, I really, really loved how she did her coins and cards, I thought they were so beautiful, and I love the embossed beans, I just really, you know, sell things like that on an artist trading card make a big impact, I think. 
And then next, this was really neat because it is recycled. Um, this artist, I'm gonna, oops, I had it upside down. Um, Debbie, she used a coffee cup and she actually took a styrofoam coffee cup and wrapper and she cut it into an artist trading card. And I love that because it's so clever, but it keeps it, it keeps that, um, that disposable product out of the landfill. So I thought that was super clever, Debbie. And I do thank you for trading with me. That was so fun. I love that. This one here is gorgeous. It has great contrast and composition. It's got a three dimensional coffee cup there. And this one is by Andrea and it's just so well composed. I love the little faux table there that she did there. And uh, coffee with a friend is like capturing happiness in a cup. And I thought that was such a sweet sentiment. This pendant and zipper pull was given to me by Miriam, and she had a really great idea. She brought in the findings, and she cut out the um, paper shapes and let us pick what we wanted, and then brought the diamond glaze and uh, ultrafine glitter to fill in. So I thought that was a cute idea, and she had it all beaded up and ready to go, so all you have to do is hook it onto your zipper. And I think I'll put this on my marker bag. And um, this was really neat, and I didn't realize it was so multi-dimensional so and I apologize for the water pump going over there it is uh, the kids are getting ready for bed so you know showers are going in so there's noise there's nothing I can do I'm a mom I got a family it is what it is uh, so this one here is from a young lady named Cheryl who I met and she made this gorgeous mixed media artist trading card and and it was funny because I was looking for her contacts. I want to make sure I didn't show anybody's contact information when I was showing these. And I was like, oh, I wonder if I can undo this bow. And I was kind of like, oh, I don't ruin it. And I opened it up and there was more goodies inside. She made this out of an envelope. Isn't that clever? And then in the envelope, she had a gorgeous little tag with a chick with a hat on it and some stamping and some postage on the other side. And then there's another, just like a regular artist trading card. It says, have a great show on the back. That's from Cheryl, and whoops, I had it upside down. It's got a little bobcat postage stamp on there, and some gorgeous text paper with some, uh, looks like dyed cheesecloth, like maybe some tea dyed cheese cheesecloth. And I just thought that was so clever to use an envelope at, and fold it up and use it as a base of your artist trading card because it gives you so much more real estate uh, in order to decorate it. So I thought that was a really cool idea. I'm gonna tie the bow back later. <laughs> And this one was from my friend Cindy, and she rode down with us, and she made this gorgeous little mannequin. Uh, I think she probably used a Heartfelt Creations die, and uh, it stands in a binder clip. I thought that was so sweet, and I'm actually going to set that um, up there next to my little my little wooden mannequin. I think that that will be really cute up there. And um, last but not least, we have this little uh, this little burlap bag that my friend Tracy had stamped for us, and it's perfect artist trading card size, so I don't know if I'll be able to fit all of them in here from this show, but it'll be cool if I can, because that'll be a great way to kind of keep the memories of this show and those uh, pieces of artwork. Uh, so thank you so much for those that came to trade. If you came to trade and you missed me, I apologize. Um, I don't know if they announced it on the second day that there was trading. They did the first day, but um, I didn't hear it if they did it on the second day. So if you had some to trade and I didn't see you, uh, my apologies. And um, Maybe I'll see you next year. I had a few left over, so maybe I'll bring those next year. So without further ado, I know this has been pretty long. I guess I'll put in the video description where you can skip ahead for the haul. Uh, we're going to move the camera around and focus on the table so you can see the things that I picked up. Because most of them are meant to work with, or I picked them up to work with older stuff. So I hope you find that uh, useful. Anyway, so let's go to the table. The first thing I want to share is a stamp set from Lost Coast Designs. It actually, they're... they're um, they're sold as individual stamps, but there were six in this new release, and they're all kind of like sassy, grumpy, um, hot mess. They're, I'm just going to call them the hot mess fairies. They're all kind of a hot mess, and I'm like, whoa, that is, is that, is that me or what? Hot mess. I'm a little whimsical, but I'm mostly a hot mess. So I thought those were just fun. I stamped them out on um, this cardstock. I just, I need to put some, um, tack it over and over on the back so that I can make them cling, but I just wanted to stamp them out so you'd be able to see what they look like, because it's really tough to tell when you're just looking at a rubber stamp, like you have there. Um, so I'm really excited to use these in a project. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I stamped them on Nina. Um, they actually stamped pretty good for me. I was just kind of like inking them up and slapping the paper down just so I could get a, an impression to share, but they, I think they're good enough to color. Um, and I, they'll probably cut them out with my skin and cut and then collage with them or something. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these yet, but I'm going to be working with these. So we're going to be one of the first things I play with. 
so I'm going to set that aside. I've got piles everywhere. I hope I don't forget anything here that I've um, that I've got. I'm just going to go pile to pile. It's not really as organized. It's somewhat organized. I just dropped something. Uh, let's look at some embellishments because, as you know, I use a lot of brads in my in my cards. I like them. They're fun and easy. And um, these are from Islet Outlet. I usually get quite a few things from there every year. I like that they have, um, they're just the right size for, for my cards. I love that they'll have slot monkeys and gnomes and coffee cups and bees and antlers and just weird stuff. Well, I saw these little foxes and it was funny because I brought a stamp set with me that I hadn't used yet to color and it was this waffle flower one and here I had colored it because I wanted something to work on in the hotel at night when we're all hanging out and gabbing and I know I'm not really going to get, I, I'm not going to want to focus on my project, I'm going to want to chit chat and visit, but I did want something to do so I colored the images from this set and then I saw those fox brads and I thought, oh maybe I'll get something made at the hotel the next night. It didn't happen, but I'm going to put these with that and keep them together so that perhaps that will, I will know it will happen. I will get that card made, but it won't happen if I put those away separately. I'm going to put those together. Um, also for embellishments, there um, there was Denise Sanner, who is a Close to My Heart consultant, and she always has a booth there. And I picked up some uh, sale embellishments. They were buy three, get one free. I love these resin flowers and stick pins. And then they had these resin... Um, birds and flowers. I don't know if I can slide that. Yeah, I can slide that out. And I just thought the, these are nice and flat, and I thought those would be great on cards. I tend to do a lot of floral, organic, feminine um, style cards, so I thought both of those would work really well. I'm going to take that out so you can see that a little bit better. I thought both of those would work really well with the style of card making that I do, and the colors all go really well together. So, um, so I know that I'll for sure that I'll use those pretty pretty readily. They're just they're just right up my alley. And then I got just a little Halloween charm. It's got these metal these metal charms, and it's got some epoxy stars. It's too bad they put the um, the label in front of where you're trying to see it. It was actually a little tricky when I was shopping for when I was when I was looking at them. I don't have many embellishments, and I tend to use them up, so it was definitely time for a restock of those. And uh, then I got these little buttons there. Well, not really buttons. They're like adhesive epoxy dome things. They're faceted though, so they catch the light. And these are Halloween themed as well. So I will put those probably in a um, in a tray with some other Halloween stuff that I have. The kids are older. I don't have many Halloween pictures. I haven't scrapbooked, but I think I have a few from a couple of years ago that I haven't gotten to yet. This was really innovative. I thought this was really clever. It's one stamp. There you can see how big it is by DRS Designs. They're the company that made the plaid and the stained glass stamps that you've seen me use before. So I have a stamp that's like stained glass and it turns anything, any other stamped images into like, it looks like a stained glass window. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then it's got you, they have a plaid maker that's really great. So when I saw this camo, stamp and the lady that designed it doing a demo I sat right down and I and I um, did a little stamp with her I, st I mean I stamped did some stamping with her and I thought this was really innovative and I love stamps like that that you can do a lot with and you can of course do this with whatever color um, or you could do whatever camo whatever particular branch of the military uses if you're making um, cards for soldiers or cards a uh, card for someone who is in the service I thought that was a really great innovative idea and I love new ideas I, and I love versatile things something you can do you can use a lot and then I was thinking you could also do like maybe some topography make it look kind of like a map or something like a topographical map especially if you're just going to use like a little smidgen of a design I thought that would look really cool too so um that would be good also to catch up on some Boy Scout and Girl Scout pages that um I haven't done and this was a make and take I did at the Technique Junkies booth uh, I have a lot of Technique Junkie stuff I need to use that I bought last year, so I'm, I'm really hoping this will um, remind me to get those stamps out because they're really fantastic. They have a lot of fantastic quirky designs. So um, that was with some glimmer sprays. I thought that was kind of fun. And this is just the DRS Designs catalog. Oh, maybe they have that stained glass stamp in there. I don't see it right off the top of the... right off, right off the top, but I will... Uh, Maybe a link to another video where I've used a stained glass stamp. That might be handy. That's what I will try to do. Put a link up for that for that video. 
Uh, so, oh, this is the thing I'm most excited about. Well, the things I'm most excited about, I should say, are in this bag. And this is going to seem a little insane, but um, I actually got mostly media at this at this trip. I really have been enjoying using Distress Oxide ink pads. So I got, um, I decided after I got the first two sets, that was the, the first um, two sets of 12 colors, the first two releases. I really liked it, but I decided that I didn't want to get every color, so I just got a cool yellow, which I felt I needed, and a really intense orange. So Carved Pumpkin and Squeeze Lemonade, and the reinkers because I really love um, being able to reink the pads as much as I want to. Because I enjoyed the Distress Oxide ink pad so much, I thought I would like to try the Distress Oxide sprays. And one thing I, um, I realized about the ink pads is that I liked having a lot of them, and the more I had, the more I used them. So I did go a little crazy because there was a seller that had them for $4 a, um, a bottle if you bought more than four. And even on like bundles on Amazon, they weren't that cheap. So I decided, I first I went in and just got, I was pulling out the colors I knew I would absolutely love, but then I realized I kind of would probably want some neutrals to kind of uh, balance some of those colors. So I decided I'm just going to go for, I don't want to say go for broke, but I definitely went whole hog and got not all of them, but I did get a good variety of the Distress Oxide sprays. So I'm really hoping that I will, um, I will like using them. I think I will. I'm going to play with them quite a bit because, and then I don't have to worry about running out because I have so many different colors. I'm, you know, I'm not, I can use them with abandon. Um, so that's, you can look for those pretty soon. I mean, these tutorials pretty soon because I'm very excited to use those. I needed a jet black archival ink. So I grabbed that while I was at the stamp show because usually there's a couple sellers that have a great stock of reinkers. And it's always a good idea to have a reinker on hand for those ink pads you rely on because it will make your pad last about seven times longer. And, um, and it's way cheaper and you're keeping trash out of the landfill because you're not replacing the whole ink pad every time. So for the, for the ink pads I rely on, I get reinkers. I also, uh, this day had a, a deal over at the paper cut where they had two for one. So a friend of mine and I, we split, uh, a two pack of these and a two pack of these. So for six fifty, we got two of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, bottles of reinker. Now these are the rainbow inks from Degruning. I have the, the rainbow sponge. I know you've probably seen that viral video on YouTube where like Dee is doing all her techniques and she's just so enthusiastic. She makes me look like Ben Stiller who's like on first Bueller's Day Off going Bueller, Bueller. I mean she makes me seem monotone and unenergetic. This this gal is just a riot. She's awesome. And she had this product called the rainbow sponge and these are the inks for that but these can also be used as reinkers because I had um, these inks before and I did re-ink some pads with them so I figured for that price so it was $3.25 for this and it was $2.50 for this for the metallics I thought it'd be great to have them on hand for some fun techniques and I wouldn't have to worry about using up like re-inkers I have stamp pads for you know because if you're doing the shaving cream marbling or you're making spray inks or doing any of that you might not want to use up the re-inkers that you rely on for your ink pads so um, that was a fantastic deal and I grabbed those and I also grabbed um, a couple sets of the alcohol pearls and the brighter colors and the reason I went with the brights is because I personally prefer bright colors uh, intense colors and also because I have a lot of um, regular alcohol ink and I do have the mixatives though I think it's like gold silver and bronze so for neutral tones I could just use those in there for the mica or some of the mica that I already have I do have pearlex and all sorts of colors so I probably could have made my own but I did want to try this and I'll probably try a DIY versus these just to see um, you know if you can make a reasonable facsimile at home or if these are really so different so it's, it's kind of nice I can deconstruct it a little bit and see um, and see what I think. So I'm excited to use those. Joggles had these at a really great price. Joggles was there for the first time and I've been wanting to um, uh, to shop on their website before but I just hadn't gotten around to it and um, I was really curious because it looked like they had really good prices on their website so I was I was excited to see them in store. Um, now we did pop by a Michaels while we were there because we don't have a Michaels in our area and I grabbed this happy birthday thank you and congratulations stamp set. I like the big kind of chalkboard art look that these stamps had and I thought they'd be very useful especially if you wanted to make a quick card or birthday or tag. I also grabbed these cute little cute little um, kind of kawaii looking notes. Now the um, the one of the things I was looking for, I was looking for that reinker, that jet black archival reinker, because I haven't been able to find it online 
either. So I was hoping that it wasn't getting discontinued or anything because I was having a, a trouble finding it. Um, I also wanted some sushi themed rubber stamps and nobody had any. I thought Michael's might, but um, they didn't have it. None of the vendors had any. So, um, but it was funny because when I was at Michael's, I found these sushi themed stickers and I found these sushi stickers here. Um, and these were like 40%. I think they were only $2.50 regular. I mean, they weren't very expensive. And I thought they would be really great for the sushi stamps. I was sure I was going to find at the stamp show. Um, but I didn't. But I do have these for when I do track down some, some sushi stamps. Sushi stamps. That's hard to say. Especially when it's late and you're tired. <laughs> Um, but so I did look for the, I knew there was a vendor there that sold Darcy's stamps and I knew she had like a soy sauce one or something with soy puns. And the thing that I love is I love food stamps that have puns associated with them. And these weren't sushi, but they had some really great puns. Um, like I'm so sorry you're in a pickle or you're cool as a cucumber, deal with it. You're kind of a big deal. I just, I thought that was really cute. Um, and then these, uh, ketchup and relish puns. I thought those were really cute. Plus they'd be super fun to color. So, um, I grabbed those two and, um, and they're red rubber. And I thought that the price $8.99 for red rubber, I thought that was a really excellent price. And, um, and those will be fun to use. I don't really have things to go with it, but I think that I could, I'll just probably just make a card with them, you know? Um, and I grabbed these at, I think it was Marco's paper. Yeah. Marco's paper, just these dilution clips. I thought they'd be fun on a, on maybe even just marking a place in, um, my, I always have these notebooks going or, that I'm using where I have different ideas jotted down in them and I usually use little, little clips and stuff to kind of keep my place for the different ideas that I'm going and these will be good for that even if I don't use them in a craft. So there was that. Um, oh, let's take a look at these items. Now this right here is actually called a treasure box and there was a stamp set to go with it but when I looked at this I thought it's a terrarium for succulents and and my friend Kathy got the Local King succulent set, which was really pretty, but I have the ones that I designed for rubber stamp tapestry, and I have other succulent stamps, and I thought, I think I'll use this, cut this out of gold, and overlay it from, like, a stamped, um, scene, and I thought that'd be really pretty, or I can use, like, a box, and I'm, and I don't know if, I think these all, these all cut out, but there's probably a way to do it so you can make things hinge and open up and actually make a box. I, I thought that'd be really fun to use with succulents anyway. And also if I, if I really wanted, like regretted not getting her succulent stamps, I could always borrow Kathy's and vice versa. She can use this die. So it's kind of fun if you go with a friend and you can, um, like, oh, are you getting that? Well, I'm going to get this and then we can swap when we, you know, if we want to, or we can share or whatever. So that's kind of a fun thing about having friends that craft. This right here is, um, something I thought would be really fun to show to do a video on and it is a it's a um it's a stamp but it has a die that goes with it and what it is is it there's many different ways to use it one is to make a shaker card one is to make uh like a, a card with like a matted image one is to do a one layered card you can just emboss the image with the dies because they're embossing dies so they'll make things puff up so there's uh, several different ways that um, Lisa from Local King Rubber Stamps showed me how to use this die. And um, she's like, do a video on it. Share the love. You know, she was like, share it, share it. Show everyone how to use everything, basically. And I loved her. I love her attitude of sharing and caring. And um, I thought that'd be a really fun, uh, fun technique to show you. So that's one of the reasons I like to go to the shows is to learn things that I can bring home to you guys and, you know, inspire you as well, hopefully. So I'm going to show you a bonehead move that I made, and I'm kind of ashamed of myself, but I figured we've all done it, and if not, well, if you've never done it, then <laughs> you are more organized than I am and probably more restrained. So there was, I, my, my triggers are sales, and I have a hard time, I just have a hard time. Um, so I was at the uh, Gary Berlin booth, and they have a lot of, uh, they have like a center section where everything's 50% off. And so I was flipping through embossing folders because I use embossing folders a lot and, um, and I got quite a few and there was a couple I wasn't sure if I had. Um, and I didn't think I had this mice for the tombstones because I think I'd looked at it a few times online and I liked it because Consumer Crafts usually has these for $2 or they'll run a sale for $2 once in a while, the $2.75 regular, I think. And I thought I passed it up and I thought, you know, that would be fun for Halloween cards and turns out I had it. But my friend Kathy was also admiring this embossing folder. So I'm going to give it to her along with these two, which I loved, but I should have known that since I really love these that I probably already had them and they were older ones and I have had them. I never even used them on scrapbook layouts and cards and 
and I forgot that I had them. So bonehead move. I had these already and they're going to go to my friend Kathy. And I have an even more embarrassing bonehead move I'm going to show you in a minute. But first, let's go through the rest of these dies. Um, this uh, bamboo embossing folder is gorgeous. I do have a bamboo uh, background stamp, but I thought this is a different design and I thought it was just really pretty and I do love kind of all over patterns. Also with these circles, I thought this would be a really pretty. It could be like um, tree rings, like it almost looks like it's slices of wood, but it also is swirly, like kind of, there was a Girl Scout pattern paper that had that pattern to it. And um, I, I've scrapbooked most of my daughter's Girl Scout stuff, but if I had some of that paper left over, I might use it with that. But in any event, I love this uh, pattern and I will definitely use it with some stuff. This I thought was totally unique. It's boot tread. And I thought this would be really nice with maybe the fox um, stuff I was showing you or any sort of um, masculine card or any card with like rustic uh, rustic wood, rustic scenery. I thought that would be really nice with that. And it's very unusual and unique. This one is record albums. And I made some Elvis stamps in my stamp maker a few years ago. And I thought it'd be fun to drag that, drag those stamps out and play with them and maybe make some cards for some Elvis fans. Or I don't know, maybe I have other music themed stuff. It would just be fun to use that. Uh, an alphabet, which I think is always great to have basic alpha, alpha backgrounds like that. It's a nice design. And this uh, star border strip, which actually I was thinking would be great to emboss, emboss some cardstock and use it on my bigger jelly plates just as a texture. Any of those would be great for that, actually, to emboss cardstock and use it as a texture. So that's, uh, those are the embossing folders. My shame, my shame and my uh, my and my joy. Um, and I got these dies, and I have been hot on this a little bit, but it's it's bar it's chicken wire, and I have quite a few chicken themed and farm themed rubber stamps, so I thought this would be really fun as an overlay because I could lay I could do a card and lay this over it, and you could like uh, kind of see through it. And I thought that would be really neat. And I like these wings because they um, are embossing dies. You'll get that texture, that wing texture to it. And I thought that'd be fun if you wanted to do any like art doll type things, which. I love that style, that kind of eclectic art doll um, altered art look, and I don't do that very often. I would like to do some more of that because I have some other stuff from Lost Coast Designs that would really go well with that. So, um, so I got those. Uh, oh, I want to show you. I'll show you my paper because I have it right here. I'm so afraid I'm going to leave something out, but I don't think I will. I didn't get as much as I have in the past. Um, these probably seem very silly. This was 50% off. I think it was $3.50. So yeah, no, it was $3. So I paid $1.50 and they're all metallic cutoffs. And I'm going to make some bookmarks with this. I'm going to try the alcohol pearls on top of the metallic paper and see how that looks. Uh, and I'm going to compare that with alcohol ink or transparent ink on top of the metallic paper to see if you really, if that's enough metallic, you don't even need the pearls. But I thought it'd be fun to just play with these because you have so many and they're so cheap. That, but they're good quality, you can just have fun and play and not worry about wasting. And I like, that's how I like to work. I don't like to worry about I'm going to run out or I'm going to waste. Uh, I also got just some single uh, sheets of paper. They were 50 cents a piece, but if you like the paper and you're going to use it, that's so much better than getting bargain paper that you're not going to use. And this was from a Double Trouble scrapbook. Oh, I got, did those have different backgrounds? Oh, I must have grabbed two by mistake, but that's all right because I really like that paper. Um, just some really pretty ones. Uh, we go to Canada in the summer, so I got a couple Canada papers, which I thought, I did, took a lot of pictures. I should zoom out here. Oh, there's Tally. You hear her meowing. Hello. Um, so I got a couple Canada papers because we go to Canada in the summer, and then I got some USA papers just for, I'll probably scrapbook our, like, summer camp trip. We just go, we just go out to a camp every, every summer for a week, and it's just a nice, a nice week. I got this for the Fox cards because I thought for sure I was going to make a card in the hotel uh, breakfast nook that night. It didn't quite happen, but I will gonna, I am going to put that in a tray with those Fox themed things so that um, it happens. And then I just love Halloween, so I got some Halloween things. If I don't end up scrapbooking it, I, I don't have many Halloween pictures left I haven't done, so I might just use these for cards because it's fun to send Halloween cards because people don't expect it. And then on my sushi, my sushi expedition, I found this paper and it was like $8. It was on sale at Michael's, but I love the rainbow. I loved this. It reminds me of childhood, just that like funky, you know, rainbow bright style. <laughs> uh, look at the unicorns. Oh, I just love that kind of sweet, innocent, whimsical stuff. Some of those things I probably won't use like that big, um, that big like word art, but you know, one of my daughters might want it. And, but I love, this was the paper right here, and I was like, yeah, that is, uh, that's, 
perfect for that those perfect stamps I'm gonna buy one day when I find them I think Avery L Lawn Fawn and Darcy's has a set that I like so um, I'm sure I, I can find them online but it's just more fun to shop with small independent stores and give them my money and this was a half off so it was two seventeen I guess and it's just 12 by 12 crystal paper and I thought it'd be a nice backdrop for a, for a scrapbook page especially if you're doing prom or semi-formal or something like that I have semi-formal pictures to scrap for my girls and I thought maybe the corally color I'll call e, uh, yeah I'll call pearls in the background might be kind of fun because they both had kind of melon coral color dresses on for the semi semi-formal so I thought that would be really pretty to do all right so this is we're getting in the tail end and i'm going to show you one online order i placed because i there was something i was planning on getting at the show but i thought i would check online before i did so i'll show you that in a second but this is a board book from joggles and it was funny because i was at joggles i, I, I actually ordered a couple i ordered i bought a couple things at joggles uh their stencils their prices were fabulous and i think they're even less online i think these were like five something these were six maybe these were five and six i can't remember um, but I love these dainty stencil designs. I thought they would be great for gel printing. I've been doing a lot of gel printing lately. Um, and this I thought was, this is unlike anything I have. I'm always looking for things that are going to expand my collection. And I don't have anything like either of those or this. Which um, Teresa was saying, oh, it looks like succulents. And uh, I was like, oh, it kind of does. So, um... Or maybe it was Kathy that told me it looked like succulents. Oh my gosh. I get so much help when I'm shopping. <laughs> so many enablers. I shop with so many enablers. I travel with the enablers, so... And then I, in turn, make sure that I enable. So I got those, um... I got those stencils. I thought that would be really fun with the gel... With the gel plate. And... Bonehead move. Look what else I... I... And I've used it, and I feel like such a bonehead here, because... Hang on a second because I had the Jelly Arts 8 inch round and I didn't think, I knew I had the 4 and 6 inch round from Jelly Arts and I didn't think they made an 8 inch. So I thought, oh, I'll get the Gel Press 8 inch and that will go with my, my 4 and 6 inch Jelly Art ones, but I already had this and I've used it. So how crazy is that? It's not like I hadn't never used it and forgot about it. So I'm probably gonna keep this one pristine. Um, I don't know if I'll, maybe I'll use it in a workshop, maybe I'll, maybe I'll sell it, I, I don't know, I kind of feel a little foolish about that, because I could have got, like, those tinier, the shaped plates, the small shaped plates, but, um, but then again, I also like having several plates on going at one time, I don't find that I use the circles as much as the rectangles, so that was a little foolish, and I will admit that, so if you've ever done that, don't feel like such a bonehead, because, you're in good company. Um, but that was, they had really great prices that joggles on those. So yeah, I feel a little, a little lame for that. But anyway, <laughs> what's done is done. And, um, and I'll, I think I'll, I'll think I'll use it because I often will have four or five jelly plates out at a time when I'm working. And these, I got these from Double Trouble Scrapbooking. They're like the life-changing brushes. Um, the reason I got these was because my friend Lori, had her brushes and she said I don't have the life changing brush well she said oh those brushes yeah I have a set and she says well I don't have the fifty fifty dollar ones life changing ones from Picket Fence Studios but I have some that I picked up at um at Amazon no she said she bought them at Walmart and she said they were like fifteen bucks or one set was four dollars one was fifteen but anyway that's neither here nor there she uh, I asked her if I could try them and so in the hotel room the first night I I tried them with this stencil here I picked up it's Echo Park I picked it up at um Simply Stamping I think uh, at the show because of the dainty lines. I love these dainty lines. There's no way I would ever be hand cutting that or cutting it with my die cutter because um, I don't like to wear down the blades and that's just so pretty and intricate and I used Distress Oxide inks and I used, I took one brush and I was able to do a color, wipe it on a napkin and it like took all the ink off. I didn't have to have one of these for every color. Um, I love my, I love using my color dusters which are these Judy Kins color dusters here. Um, the, the color dusters are way quicker I'm going to tell you that right now. These take a little bit longer, but the blend is more smooth and the blend with the color dusters is more textured. So it would depend on what I wanted. And I thought 20 bucks was a fair price to give these a try. And they felt just like the ones I had used in the hotel room. Um, and um, I, I probably might take the little ones out. I don't know if I'd actually use the little ones for anything. I might actually take them out, wash them and use them in my makeup because I'm pretty sure these are like just the cheap makeup ones you get offline. But um, I could have them in my hot little hands that day for 20 bucks. And I thought that, uh, well, it was worth it to me. So, um, I'm going to play with these a bit. And in fact, I'm thinking about doing a video and you can let me know in the comments below if you like this idea. I'm thinking about doing a video where I 
compare uh, what the look you get from a color duster versus these types of makeup brush type blenders versus foam with a caveat that I'm not the best foam blender in the world versus um, other different blending tools that I've picked up over the years. So you can kind of see what look you're going to get from which and if you're looking to invest in a tool, what type you would like. So um, I think that's I think that might be the first thing I do with these just to do a little comparison for anybody else that's considering these brushes or the um, the pricier alternative of these brushes. Uh, but I mean, like I lifted up the set stencil. We're all sitting around the breakfast nook. We're like crafting and we're just, you know, you know, we're just chatting about the day. There wasn't much crap. To be honest, there wasn't much crafting going on. We're all just hanging around, gabbing. Um, and I lift up the stencil and, and audible gasps. For everyone goes, oh, like that. It was so funny. It was like, if I, I wish I could have recorded a sound bite of that because it was so perfect. It would have been like, I could have sold it to like radio stations. It was so good. And then as soon as everybody did it, we all laughed. We're all cracking up like, we should have recorded that. That was so funny. But, uh, but it was, it was awesome. I really thought that that did a good job. So I can see why they call the uh, the expensive one life-changing. Um, so before I went to the show, I knew I needed to re-ink some of my lighter shades of Copic markers because what I do, even if I mix match all my markers when I'm working on a project, but the ones I tend to blend out with are these super pale shades. And, um, and some of them were getting kind of dry and you don't want to let your brush tip markers go dry because if you do, they start to swell. And the brush tips will start to swell and fray. Even the Copics will start to get some damage if you let them go dry. So especially since I rely on these colors so much, I grab these colors in the, um, in the Copic refills. If you're interested in what colors these are, uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll, and I'll list it out on my blog when I put the haul up. But um, they're the really pale colors that I use the most. And I also got a glitter duster because I've wanted one since I saw it demonstrated at CHA. I could because I use glitter a lot. I use fine glitter quite a bit. And I thought this will control the mess and then you don't have to tip so much back in your bottle because it's only putting out a small amount, just the amount you need. So I'm excited to try that. And then I got a big thing of Copic blending solution basically because I want to see how different it is from the denatured alcohol I usually use for stuff like that. Um, and I didn't want to put denatured alcohol in my actual Copic blender just because um, I kind of wanted to keep those kind of virgin with Copic inks and Copic, uh, Copic reinkers and stuff. So, and there was a free gift with purchase, a free dye with purchase, and they sent this flower one, which actually I think I'd probably use. So I was kind of, when I saw the free with purchase, I was like, oh, I wonder if it's going to be anything I'll actually use. But yeah, I would use this. And if it turns out that I use it a few times and I don't really care for it, my friend Cindy does gorgeous flowers and I'm sure she would, she could probably add this to her stash and do some amazing things with it. So, oh, by the way, the reason I wanted to tell you I ordered these from Scrapbook Pal, um, they had great prices, but I didn't want to recommend them until I'd actually ordered from them myself. That's why I haven't recommended Joggles yet until I ordered from them, until I met the people and and um, bought from them myself uh, because I just want to make sure everything is is good um, and they I ordered at 10 p.m. at night they were in the mail by 10 a.m. in the morning it was crazy and I paid uh, the price was like 526 per reinker and then the, I had a 10% off discount code so I paid less than five a reinker and they were ten dollars each at the stamp show so I'm so glad I bought these at Scrapbook Pal and I will link that below I will link all these things below if they have online stores not all of them do but most of them do so I will link them all up and hopefully if you're interested in any of this stuff you can find it pretty easily I think I showed you everything um, including my foolish goofs but I uh, hope you enjoyed this please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this. I'm not going to be doing um, hauls as a regular thing on my channel. It's pretty much a once or twice a year thing. So um, I hope you enjoyed it because there's not going to be another one for probably a year. No, just kidding. <laughs> if you liked it, tough luck. No. <laughs> um, so I want to thank everyone I met at the show. Uh, you really reminded me why I do what I do because I was feeling kind of frustrated lately and uh, I had a couple people came come up to me and tell me that um, they were going through a real dark time in my life and they find my channel and um, it gave them something to smile about every day and it gave them a way to forget about their worries and that just uh, just really put things into perspective and just gave me the motivation to to keep on keeping on so uh, it was wonderful a few days off were just what I needed I thank you so much for your patience as I have been away from my social media and my classroom and stuff for the last couple of days I will be picking through and catching up and uh, and whatnot over the next couple days and um, thanks for watching as always. We'll see you next time. Happy crafting!